Hi, I'm Nick from No Regrets Personal Training and today we're going to be talking to you a bit about rehabilitation and many people might skip many of the important steps or they might do the steps but are in the incorrect order or they don't do the last step which finishes it right off to prevent any injury coming back. All right, so the formula that we use, which we sort of refer to it as a formula because it's a great place for knowing where to start. All right, so we use it with any person we see with any type of injury, and this is highly effective. I got this um, method from Paul Check. This is a, a, so I didn't coin this term, this is his term. I've just applied it myself in my uh, years of being a personal trainer, and it's highly effective. All right, um, so today we're going to show you a few of the examples. Now, the order of the formula is um, there's four steps in it. And the first step is improving flexibility. All right, so anytime you have an injury or a pain or something, first thing you must look for is any flexibility imbalances or problems. And then using a whole series of tests and assessments to work out, okay, what's normal versus say the other side or what it should be and using a stretch to um, bring it back to normal. Next step is stability. So you, anytime there's an injury, there's something unstable. So if there's a tight muscle, there must be a weak one. So when you work in stability training, you must do that before strength training because you no point trying to strengthen something that's unstable. Next step is strength training. So you, then you would start to apply strength training once you've got it, the optimal flexibility range of motion and, and it's quite a stable joint. Then now you need to strengthen it, all right? And the last step, which is the one that's skipped most often, is the power stage. So, so the power stage, a, big, a good example would be using it in the arm in a throwing action. All right? So for shoulder rehabilitation, there's a lot of movements of the rotator cuff and the, the throwing action itself is quite explosive. So if you don't train to that level, you, there's a good chance that you haven't fully recovered. There might be no pain, but the minute you go back to your sport or whatever you were doing, it's a good chance that it will come back. So. We're going to show you a couple of examples with a lower back um, injury, um, a knee injury and a shoulder injury. So there's many others that we could use, but just to keep it simple, we'll use the top three and uh, we'll show you how we apply the success formula. And we've got young Nathan here and he's going to show us like, uh, let's assume that he's got a lower back problem and from the, and we've determined it's mainly instigated from the moment that he tries to bend over. All right, so Nathan's going to do, I'm going to be looking at how he sort of moves and then we're going to use the success formula of flexibility, stability, strength and power to see if we can improve his situation of, of his pain. All right, so let's have a look at Nathan, how he bends. So he's just going to be bending over and he gets his pain about there. All right, so we'll get him to stand up straight again. Let's get it to do it again. And basically when he gets to there, I, I can see he's starting to get pain. So I'm starting to think now, he's got some flexibility problems around his hips or his hamstrings or his glutes. All right, so what we want to do is we want to take him down to the floor. So he's going to lie on his back. And we're going to do like a quick hamstring stretch. So we, we will we'll test him and we'll say, okay, tell us when. And if he says there, all right, that's, that's not optimal flexibility. We know that he's very, very tight. Where, you know, we know that Nathan doesn't have a low back problem and we should be able to comfortably get him to 90 degrees, which is where it is, all right? So if he was here, straight away, the test tells you that that's what he needs to do to get it to there, all right? Then we would use a series of other stretches to try and loosen his hip up. So let's say this is the sore side and he's, about, he's stuck about there, but the other leg goes right over, then we know we need to improve the flexibility through the hip to improve him to a point where it's the same as the other side. All right, so we're just designing a stretching program and that's the first thing we look for because we need to get everything the same. All right, it's a bit like having a car that's got bald tires on the left side, brand new tires on the right side. We need to make everything optimally the same. All right, so that'd be our first starting point for the bending action is looking at the glutes, the hips, the hamstrings to try and work out, okay, is there some problems there? And there's many other stretches that we would use for this, but just for the sake of the video, this, this is just giving you an idea. Now the next stage is we've, we've designed our stretching programs. Now we want a stability exercise. So now we're gonna get Nathan to be on all fours. 
and he's going to leave his sore hip on the ground and his good arm on, on his left arm on the ground. He's going to lift his other arm uh, like in the horse stance and he's going to move his hands in and out without touching the ground. And basically we want him to try and learn to not sort of move over like this. That would be commonly what we see with someone with really tight hips. And it, we want him to sort of imagine he's got a glass of water there and he's still moving his arm and leg out. And he's learning how to stabilize through here and through here. So it's like a complete integrated movement. All right, so this is a excellent exercise for anyone that has low back form, uh, pain. And when he extends his legs out, he gently just holds his belly button in, all right? So he's learning how to activate his core. His core is the stabilizer. So we're really honing in on stabilizers here. Again, there's a whole series of other exercises we would probably need to use, um, but this would be one of our first ones to start with. So then if we stand him back up now, and we're at the point where we've developed our stretches, we've developed our stability exercises, now we need a strength exercise. So. Now Nathan's gonna go into the position that, that creates his pain, and we're gonna develop the strength exercise. And now, if we wanted to give him load, we would put, say, a barbell or a dumbbell or a medicine ball, something in his hands, to give him the, the feeling of using the strength in his legs to push him up. And we would wanna make sure that we can keep that natural sort of curvature in his back, because previously he was not like that, he was more like that. All right, can you see the difference? Our flexibility training has allowed him to find the position of no pain. Now we need to strengthen it in a way that it learns to stay there on its own, right? And when he gets into that position of, of, uh, of movement. So when he comes up, we want him to develop a strength to squeeze through the glutes, stick his bum out and do it again. The power version would be him just doing this way faster. So Nathan's gonna demonstrate like a power clean movement. That's it. And he's just doing it way faster and see how his toes come off the ground. It's very much like a jumping action. All right, so that'd be an example of like, if we had him doing that with load, with a barbell or a dumbbell or medicine ball, for example, um, even, and even if he did jump, that'd be an ex a good example of using power. So we've taken him from a position of where he couldn't bend over to even tie his shoes up, improved his flexibility, made him more stable, strengthened him up so he could do it over and over with no problems. And then the last phase was to do it really fast. If you cover all those four things, then you, you're guaranteed to sort of like be better than you ever were before, all right? So that's the key to the rehab process is to not skip a step and to make sure you do all four of them, don't miss the last one. That's, that'll be the biggest mistake we would often see. All right, so I hope that explains to you the lower back pain and uh, we'll show you another couple of examples with knee and shoulder. All right, welcome back. Um, what we're gonna show you now is how we would use the, that same formula again, this time for a shoulder pain. All right, so last time we showed you lower back, this time it's shoulder pain. So we're gonna go through sort of assessing where Nathan um, here has got some of the issues and using that formula, where, what program or what choice of exercises to use to help him rehabilitate it permanently so that it doesn't have any problems. All right, so we've, we've already established from Nathan that it's his right shoulder that's the problem, and he especially feels it when he brings his arm out to here, especially on any things that he has to push. So in the gym, he can't do any of these movements that he loves to do, um, and it's becoming a real problem all the time. All right, so, um, so the first thing we're gonna do is look at him in, on, from a chest um, flexibility. So we're gonna use that flexibility, and we, again, we would have to use several tests for this, but we're just gonna use one, just to give you the idea. So we'll take Nathan down to the floor. Line your back for us first, Nate. And we're gonna have his arms across him like that. And basically from behind, I'm just sort of looking to see how much gap is between his arms and the floor. So even if he puts his hands by his side, and palms down, and commonly what we would see is something like that. And that would indicate that he has a tight chest. All right, so there's a muscle here that really becomes quite irritated and very, very tight and short, creates a lot of sort of problems, all right? So, so now that we know that it's like that muscle and it's on his right arm, we'll flip, to stretch it, we're gonna flip him over. And he's gonna pop one arm out to the side. That's it. 
and he's going to drive that shoulder into the floor. He's going to push himself up. So now we're getting a huge stretch through this muscle, all right? So this will be our first thing that we must look for. Because remember I said before, we must restore the optimal flexibility to the joint. Otherwise, it can't stabilize itself correctly or strengthen itself correctly. So the first part he needs to do is keep his shoulder on the ground, his elbow straight, pushes himself up. So he's stretching it from that end. The second part to that is he brings his hand up off the floor like that, spreads his fingers out as much as he can. This is what we call a myofascial stretch. All right, so he's sort of now pulling the muscle from the other end and this end at the same time. So he's getting a great stretch all the way through from little finger right up to the other end of the, of the myofascial line. So this is a highly effective stretch that he would need to do all of the time. All right, so now let's say that we've moved along and we've used a few other stretches and we've got him to a point where now he's, the flexibility looks quite normal. All right, we now need to work into the stability stage. So there's several exercises we could use, but just for the sake of the video, we'll use one. And this is one of the ones where we use a stability exercise in a sort of a push-up position. So basically we want to see if Nathan can stabilize this quite well. With two feet on the ground, it's easy. With one foot on the ground, it makes him very unstable. And when I give him a few nudges, you'll see the board move quite violently. And if I make the nudges quite random, He'll have to work out how to stabilize. So it becomes a part of a strength exercise, but more of a stability exercise. And if he's really having to work quite hard through his shoulders, if you can have a rest, Nath, quite hard through his shoulders to work out how to make it stabilize correctly. All right, so this would be our second phase of our training. So we've res restored optimal flexibility first. Now we've restored stability with, with this exercise and a several others. Um, now the next stage is the strength training. So we're going to use the cable machine behind us to show you how we would do that. Probably my preferred choice, if it's the pushing movement pattern of the shoulder, that is the one that causes the pain. In most cases it is. Um, this would be a better choice than a dumbbell, all right? For the simple fact that you can, standing up, it creates like more abdominal control, legs become, sta it's much more stabilizing exercise. There's actually a lot of load going through your abdominals even though it looks like an arm exercise. Um, the, the beauty of the cables is that it doesn't actually create like gravity compression forces of barbells and dumbbells do. So the, the dumbbell, barbells and dumbbells work by gravity trying to fall to the ground. Cable, we can dissipate the load away from you, meaning that the load goes actually through the trunk. All right, so this is a really good choice of exercise for a strength training exercise of the shoulder. All right, so Nathan's gonna demonstrate how he does that. So he's in his split stance, like a lunge stance, and he's got his hand pushing through. And we want to make sure that there's good shoulder mechanics working through his trunk. So we would make sure that he has his hand coming back through like that. So what he was doing was the common mistake of most people do. And he should have his trunk, his belly button gently engaged. So he's got like nice tension through his abdominals. And he's got that beautiful action of pushing, right? But you can see like the whole body's involved. There's nothing separate. All right, so this is a heavily integrated movement. So it's a very key to getting the exercises right because nothing in your body works separate from anything. So a lot of the earlier exercises are isolated, but this one's very much integrated. Okay, so now we've moved through the first three stages. We've restored his flexibility. We've got really good stability working through the shoulder. A lot of these exercises will need to be continually done for quite a while, all right? So it's not like you can just tick them off, you're done with them. You'll have to keep working with them until it's fully restored itself. We've, we've implemented the strength training exercises with the cable machine. Now we're at the stage of developing power. So Nathan's gonna demonstrate, and again, there's so many different ones, you need to pick the right one for the movement that you need the most. Um, we're gonna demonstrate one with us that we call a split snatch. So Nathan's gonna show you how we do this. And basically like you now, he's implementing with a dumbbell, like I said in the, in the strength phase, it was a little bit too hard to use. Now we can use it because he's got like explosive power going straight into the, into the shoulder with the rest of the body. All right, so see the speed of the movement so much different to a strength exercise. And uh, this is one of the areas that people don't finish off with. And hence they're always set up for problems when they go back to playing their sport or their occupation or whatever it is they do. If you, if you can finish this stage off, the chance of re-injury is pretty small. 
Um, so there you go. So I hope that explains that to you for the lower back one. And uh, uh, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video to give you some different tips on other things.